How do you become a Python backend developer in today's market? Well, I've created a list of all of the skills that you need to know, so stick around and let me know how far you are on this journey. So first, let's quickly break down what the role of a Python backend developer actually is. Now, these developers are typically responsible for building, maintaining, and testing server-side logic, databases, and APIs. They're usually responsible for the communication between the front end and the back end, handling data storage, and things like authentication and security. And in some roles, they may even be responsible for deployment and scaling out various services. Now, obviously, these roles vary, and depending on where you're working and the exact job you have, you may need to use all of the skills on my list or just some of them. With that in mind, this is pretty much a complete list, and if you learn everything here, you're gonna be well prepared to land a backend developer Python role. So with that said, let's get into the list and let's go through all of the topics that you need to learn, and keep in mind, you could learn these in any order that you want. So the first skill on my list is language knowledge. Now, if you're gonna be a Python developer, of course you need to know Python, but you need to know more than just the basics. So sure, if statements, comprehensions, lists, functions, all that stuff, you need to know it and know it really well, but you need to go beyond that. You need to learn about advanced features, object-oriented programming, meta classes, decorators, generators, context managers, iterators, all these different features that are built into Python that maybe differ from other more popular programming languages. After that, you also want to know about asynchronous programming, how the global interpreter lock works in Python, multi-processing and multi-threading, and how to really get the most performance out of your Python applications. You're also going to want to understand Python modules and libraries and typical Python conventions and how to write Pythonic code. Python is a little bit of a weird programming language. There's a lot of cool things you can do in it. And if you're coming from another language, you're going to have to kind of adapt your style of writing code because it is a little bit different in Python than a language like C++ or Java or something along those lines. Now, the next thing you'll need to know is data structures and algorithms. Now, I made an entire roadmap on this, so I'm not going to go through all of the different topics here. You can check that out here. But the point is you need to know about things like arrays, linked lists, heaps, binary trees, etc., and especially time complexity and analyzing the runtime performance of your code. Now, as much as you may not use this on the job, it's going to be important when you're actually applying for jobs. You're going to realize as you start going through this roadmap and learn all of these skills that you're going to need to eventually prepare for coding interviews. And during those interviews, you're going to be asked data structures and algorithm style questions. And I'm not going to lie to you, this is pretty brutal. It sucks to prepare for these. And it's just really annoying. And honestly, one of the things that I hated about trying to land a job and just becoming a software engineer. Now, that's why I want to share with you a resource here that can make preparing for your interviews so much easier, but also a lot more enjoyable. And that's P Grammar, the sponsor of this video. If you've tried just jumping into lead code questions, you know that this is extremely frustrating. You get stuck, you don't know where to go next, and then you end up looking through countless solutions, many of which may not even be the best ones. Now, with P Grammar, you're not alone in this process. The platform not only offers a wide variety of coding questions across different languages, but it also dynamically tailors the difficulty to your experience level. Whether you're preparing for a junior or senior level interview, P Grammar ensures you're solving questions at the right level to challenge you without overwhelming you. Now, if you hit a wall, P Grammar's built-in hints can guide you in real time using AI. Plus, you get feedback on partial solutions, and the hints feel like having an experienced software engineer right by your side. Once you submit your solution, P Grammar gives you insightful feedback that's both encouraging and constructive. This keeps you motivated while showing you exactly where you can improve, which is crucial for mastering the interview process. Now, the best part is that you can use P Grammar for free, so click the link in the description, give it a try, and finally start enjoying preparing for your coding interviews. So moving on, the next skill I have for you is basic web development. Now, as much as you're a backend developer, a lot of times you are going to have to look at front end code. Now, you might not need to write it or be a complete expert, but you definitely should understand at least the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you haven't already, make sure you learn a little bit about those, get some familiarity with JavaScript, maybe some front end frameworks like React, Angular, or Vue. Again, you don't need to be an expert, but you want to have a bit of knowledge and familiarity so you can communicate with the front end team. And you'll see that a lot of job postings actually do require this kind of basic understanding of these languages 
for backend developers. Now, after that, we get into arguably the most important thing you need to know, which is API development. Now, this is a pretty broad field, but I'll give you a few subtopics that you'll want to look into. So first of all, you need to understand what an API is, what a REST API is, what HTTP is, and those various methods. You're also going to need to look into Python frameworks like Flask, Fast API, and Django. Django is probably the most notable, but Fast API and Flask are being used more and more, so I'd recommend having some familiarity and comfort with those. You're also going to need to know about authentication and authorization. So what are tokens? What is a JWT token? What is OAuth? How do you secure an API? And even things like rate limiting are good to look into here as well. And going back quickly to our Python modules, I also want to add to that list Pydantic. This is used for data validation specifically within frameworks like Fast API. So definitely have a look at that. It's a pretty useful module you'll want to know about. So generally, you just need to be familiar with APIs, building APIs, and how you do that in Python using these various different frameworks, security, authentication, all that kind of stuff. Get familiar with APIs. Now, moving on, the next skill on my list is databases. Now, this is one of the most important parts of your job as a backend developer. You need to understand how databases work, and you're going to be dealing with databases all the time inserting data, retrieving data, backing up data potentially. So you really need to be comfortable and actually quite good in this area. Now, in order to do this, I recommend learning about both NoSQL and SQL databases. So using something like MongoDB, for example, or Firebase, understanding how to structure data in that document structure with kind of nested objects, and then being familiar with more traditional databases like SQL database. How do you actually create tables? How do you insert values? How do you run advanced queries on the database. Now moving on, since you are writing code in Python, you're going to need to learn about an ORM. Now ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping, and this is something that's used in pretty much all of the major frameworks to map data to a Python object. This way, you can just use Python-like syntax or Python syntax itself, actually, to apply changes to your database without having to write, for example, custom SQL queries. So get familiar with ORMs. One that's very popular is something like SQL Alchemy that allows you to write Python code that makes changes directly to your database or queries data. Beyond that, of course, you want to know about best practices when it comes to storing and handling data, preventing things like SQL injection attacks, and just basic database design concepts. Oh, and as a quick bonus here, if you want, you can look into something like GraphQL. Personally, I don't use it that much as a Python developer, but I have seen some companies listing this as a requirement or something they want you to know about. So moving on, the next set of skills I have here is Linux and command line. Now, as a backend developer, or really any developer for that matter, you should be comfortable working on the command line, using tools to navigate the command line, creating files, removing files, modifying configuration files, and just that basic familiarity so that if you have to go SSH into a remote virtual private server or something, you're able to do that, and it's not going to take you hours to find all of the simple commands. This isn't something that takes a long time to learn. Learn, but I definitely recommend just getting comfortable in that Linux environment, working with operating systems that don't have a graphical user interface, for example, and being comfortable kind of using those commands, writing some basic shell scripts, all that kind of stuff. Moving on, I have a few fundamental tools and technologies that you'll want to be familiar with. So for example, you need to know Git and version control. If you're going to be working as a software developer, really in any role, you need to understand how to work with other people, what a repository is, how to make commits, how to change branches, and some more advanced features as well that are bound to come up if you're using Git on a large team with a lot of people. Beyond that, you also want to know about testing. You're almost always going to have to test your code and write automated tests to do that. So unit tests, things like integration tests, system tests, get familiar with that terminology and how to write tests, for example, for APIs using frameworks like Flask or Django. After that, you're also going to want to know about debugging. So how do you use your IDE? How do you step through the code and utilize a debugger? And one more tool I will add here is curl or postman, which allows you to more manually test your APIs. So now we're moving on to my final set of skills, which is related to deployment. 
Now, unfortunately, a lot of backend developers end up becoming responsible for deploying different services, even though that can be a full time job on its own. So as much as you might not want to do this or you should think that, you know, there's someone else in the organization like a DevOps engineer taking care of this. A lot of times it's just given to you. So you should at least be familiar with some of these topics. So, for example, things like Docker and Kubernetes. How do you containerize your applications? How do you use Kubernetes to handle different pods, spin those up and scale the different services? Things like CI and CD. How do you use GitHub Actions? How do you have automatic deployments run? How do you automatically test your code? Beyond that, things like cloud platforms could be Azure, could be something like Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services. Usually companies are using one of these, so you just need to be familiar with whatever one they're using, depending on the job you're applying for. Again, this stuff is not super complicated. It's not going to take you years to learn, but I'd recommend go through some simple courses, watch some YouTube videos, just mess around with these technologies. So if you are asked about them, you have some familiarity and you could pick up the skills you need when you're on the job. There you go, guys. That is my list of the skills you need to become a Python backend developer. I'm sure I missed something, so please leave a comment down below and let me know how far you are on this journey. Are you trying to become a backend developer? Are you close? Have you learned all of these skills? I want to know, so leave a comment down below and I look forward to seeing you in another video.